Hey, welcome to a very special Dev Radio session where we're going to talk about Bicep. Um, anybody who's followed some of the work I've done on YouTube and some of the content that Matt and I have posted here on this channel and other venues, seen that we really love um, infrastructure as code. We, we, we love infrastructure automation. We've done lots of ARM templates, and we've been passionate about teaching people about that. But it has a massive learning curve. And about a year ago, you know, learned about Bicep for the first time. And while it was pretty interesting at the time, I wasn't sure where it fit into my workflow. And I think a, a, you know, a couple people were felt that way. But, you know, Bicep has matured, gotten a really complete tool chain. Um, and at this point, Samir um, and Phil, they said, hey, we should talk about Bicep on Dev Radio. So I went back and looked again for the first time in a long time. And I realized, wow, this is way better than I remembered it to be. Maybe I looked at it the wrong way the first time. And all of a sudden, I'm not as excited to write ARM templates again. Nothing wrong with ARM. I just, this this was pretty great. So Samir Doshi, Phil Jerson, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks, thanks Eddie. Yeah, great to be here. So I, I'm, I, I want to get out of the way because um, I want other people to get just as excited as I am right now uh, about um, some of the cool things you can do with Bicep. So Matt and I, we, we're we always here. We're going to hang to the side, but I really want to hear, you know, what, what y'all two have to say about um, about Bicep and if you got any demos or stuff you can show us, that would be amazing too. So thank you again for coming on and love to see what you got to share. Yeah, absolutely. Um, happy to do that. And thanks again for having us today. Um, so as you mentioned, you know, Bicep has been around for a little while. Uh, I think it kind of just started off as a little bit of a pet project here at Microsoft um, as somewhat of an alternative to using uh, ARM templates. And for those that aren't familiar, you know, ARM, uh, which stands for Azure, Azure Resource Manager, um, was kind of our template language that we had for creating uh, deployment templates that would allow you to, you know, persist your infrastructure as code and be able to create repeatable um, automation that could deploy your resources out to an Azure environment. So you could build that into, you know, your CI/CD pipelines. Uh, you could have automation scripts that could deploy those resources and so forth. What people were finding, though, is you know the the schema for those uh, ARM templates is uh, a little bit hard to understand sometimes. And you know the the first time you see a, an export of a, a large ARM template with all of your resources from you know a, a resource group or a subscription, you sometimes kind of wonder what's going on. And there's a lot of confusing you know string concatenation and identifier lookups and things going on all over the place. Uh, that really seemed to be a little bit of a, a barrier to entry. And, and Samir and I, with uh, some of the customers that we've worked with over the past couple of years, you know, we get that a lot from customers saying, you know, I, I don't want to have to learn another template language. I already, you know, have worked with other uh, vendors, technologies, you know, maybe they're using something like Terraform um, and they see ARM templates and they're like, wow, this is just really confusing. You know, we want something that's a little bit easier to work with. Um, so really, I believe that's where this uh, idea for the Bicep template came out. And like you said, initially it was you know just kind of playing around with some ideas, and now it's it's very mature, um, and our native tooling in Azure understands it. So there's no need to you know build a Bicep template and then convert it over to an ARM template in order for it to be understood. Uh, all of that native tooling uh, within Azure understands that. So you could do a, a template upload right to the portal if you wanted to. Um, if you have the latest version of the Azure CLI or Azure PowerShell, those tools now natively understand Bicep. So you can just create your templates and uh, create a new deployment as you might be familiar with doing in the past with an ARM template. Um, and it'll just understand that Bicep template. Uh, so that's important. I just kind of glossed over that quickly, but uh, as we get into the demo here uh, and we talk about some of the prerequisites, uh, you will want to make sure that you have, uh, you know, pick which one you want to use, either the Azure CLI uh, or Azure PowerShell. Make sure you have the latest versions of those installed. Um, and I believe the latest version, I'm going to show the Azure CLI today, and I believe I have 2.28 installed, which I think came out uh, earlier this week or maybe last week. Uh, but at a minimum, I believe you should have 2.20 support spice up. Okay. Um, yep. Great. And I think, and, Phil, uh, one go of ahead, the Samir. problems that we often ran into with ARM, uh, many customers run into, and I know I personally have run into this, is if I want to create an ARM template um, to deploy a resource, 
And that's kind of how this this whole thing started. As Phil and I decided to create some resources in Azure. Uh, Phil insisted it be infrastructure as code, which which he should. And my thought was, OK, let me go download a sample ARM template and modify it. Uh, and Phil took me through this demo to show me that, no, 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 no you can just do it all um, by hand. And that, that was amazing to me. As, like many of our customers, what I would always do is go to GitHub, find a sample ARM template for the resources I want, and kind of uh, modify it here and there to get what I want out of it. Uh, but that that's not really you know, coding like I'm used to. Yeah, exactly right. And that's the experience we've seen with a lot of our customers, right? Is, you know, it takes a lot of, you know, oh, I have to go find the right sample, you know, and there are plenty of examples out there that you can start with, um, you know, and, and in the past I've done things like, you know, just go to the portal and manually deploy a bunch of the resources that I want and then, you know, export the template and kind of reverse engineer things. Yeah. Um, and there is still a somewhat of a process for that using Bicep as well. But it's just not all that great of a developer experience. You know, if, if I just want to hurry up and get started with a new project, and that's the example that um, Samir and I were just talking about. It's like, hey, we, you know, we know we're going to need to deploy this to different environments. We know we're going to want to deploy this multiple times. We know we should be good developers and create infrastructure as, as code and not just do everything manually. We want to put the correct automation in place. And a lot of times when you think about an ARM template, you're like, oh man, now I have to spend all this extra time to go you know, find all these examples and look up all these references and figure that out. Um, and so we just kind of started playing around with this a few weeks ago and realized, wow, this is so easy to get started. Um, and the tooling that we have available for it now in the form of the uh, extension for VS Code makes it so easy to figure out what you're looking for and, and get a bicep template whipped up in, in just a few minutes. So um, I'll, I'll start working on that here. We'll create a new bicep file. Do you guys have any any other questions while I'm doing that right away? I'm really interested in seeing this file. I know that I agree with both of you. Our templates, they democratize and make it very transparent what's going on behind the scenes with the requests for your deployments to Azure. And it makes it so that you can really, really trace what's going on by how the scenes, but they're not intuitive. I, I don't think I've ever, if, and I've been writing our templates since they first went to public preview. I don't mm -hmm. think I can write our template from scratch. And yep. you know, that, I have years in it and I can't write one from scratch. So if you can write this, exactly. one, it's already a big win in my book. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, I'm just going to create a new, uh, I have VS Code open here and I've already installed the extension for Bicep. Uh, if you don't have that, it's it's pretty easy to find. Uh, you can just click on the extensions blade um, and then simply type BICEP, and that should be the first one that pops up. So you can see I've already got that installed, so we're good to go. Um, so I created a file uh, in my workspace called main.bicep, and another clue that we have the extension installed is we get this cool little robotic arm uh, icon here on, on the file type, so that's kind of neat. Um, great. So here we go. We've got just a blank template to start with. And when I showed this to Samir earlier, I thought, well, you know, really, I just want to deploy a resource. I, I don't need to really worry about right away, like all the different parameters and variables and all those other things that might go into uh, my template. Let's just start with the resource. So I simply started typing resource and you can see right away I'm getting IntelliSense around that. The next thing I want to do is provide a a local name for the resource that I'm creating. So I could reference it if I needed to elsewhere in my template file. So in our case, we're going to do a simple example of creating a storage account. Um, so I could just, you know, call it storage one or, or something of that nature. And now the IntelliSense is saying, oh, okay, well, which, what type of resource is this? Which resource provider in Azure is going to create this thing? And it's showing us a list of all of those available providers. So I'll start typing storage, um, and that takes us to the uh, microsoft.storage slash storage accounts. Oh, and are you tab completing that? Yeah, and then I just click tab, <laughs> and it, it completes that out for me. Um, I could, you know, if I wanted to use the, key, uh, the keyboard and mouse, or just the mouse, I could mm -hmm. also, you know, select that from the dropdown as well. Um, and then you can see the next part that it's trying to IntelliSense for us you know, kind of looks like a, a, a date format of sorts here. And, and what this is asking us for is 
um, which version of the ARM API should we use to deploy this resource? So as new features are rolled out to Azure, uh, you know, new versions of the API are made available uh, through um, a, a date version syntax like this. So it's just saying, hey, which one do you want to use? Let's make sure we support the, the correct version for the resource that you want to deploy. Right. Um, so in our case, I'll just pick the latest one. And again, I'll hit tab and that'll complete it. See, that's great because just like the ARM templates, you can lock it to a version. So as the service changes, as new yep. features are required, it doesn't matter. It doesn't break your bicep file. Yep. Um, and if you are familiar with ARM templates, I, you know, I believe the way that you define that is at the, the very top of the ARM template file, there's usually like a schema version that includes yep. the API mm -hmm. date that you want to use. Yep. Um, so it's similar to that. Uh, but with each resource we define in this template, we could pick a different version of, of that API if we wanted to, to support the features that we need. So the next step I want to do here is, you know, now I've kind of got the, the declaration, if you will, of the resource that I want to create and which provider we're going to use to create it. Now I have to um, give the definition of, you know, the properties for this object. So I'll just simply say equals. And then I'll do the syntax for a new object, which are the squiggly braces. So it kind of feels a little bit like a, a C sharp, maybe a JavaScript kind of language. It, it's not really any programming language. It's uh, its own unique language. It's a domain specific language specifically yeah. for BICEP. Um, but it's very, very simple. Uh, the other nice thing about it though, is that you know, along with this IntelliSense, you are getting some of the, the type checking here. So, you know, you're not going to make a mistake. And then when you go to deploy or, or validate the template, only then do you find out uh, that you've made a, a mistake, like with a, a type or something. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so I've defined, you know, just kind of an empty body for the new object here. And right away, the other thing that the uh, extension in VS Code is telling us is, you know, we're getting this highlighting here that, you know, the, the old familiar red squiggle, you did something wrong. So if I hover over that with the mouse, it'll tell us, hey, you know, it looks like you're trying to define a storage account. And based on that fact, these are the properties that are required for you to specify uh, for this particular resource. So it wants uh, a name, a location, a kind, and a SKU. Um, so I'll start off with the name. So that is that a live linting of the file? Yep, it is, yes. Um, and it, it uses, um, it's, it's baked into the extension itself. So as new API versions become available, the extension gets updated so that the linting can understand kind of what the latest and greatest is. But something important to note, and especially folks that are familiar with using, um, you know, something like Terraform, is as new features become available in um, Azure in the API, you don't necessarily have to update anything for BICEP to be able to work with that. So even, even if I had an older version of the extension that you know didn't yet contain the linting for the latest API version, I could still write a template against that version and submit it to uh, Azure for deployment, and it would understand it, and it would work. Uh, so that's really nice, because a lot of times with some of those other products, you have to wait for somebody to update the extension, update the provider for those new features to become available. Here with BICEP, all of that is available immediately. So there's no you know, waiting for uh, developers to kind of build that into the next revision. Well, that is fantastic. Um, yeah. So let, let's be really bad here and let's put a hard coded name in. How do I do a string? Yep. And I'm already being really bad because I know uh, based on experience that you can't have dashes in, in storage names, but I'll, I'll put one in that will be valid. So let's call it like my cool storage, right? So this, you're right, this is something that you would start off with. You'd probably just, you know, kind of hard code some things, try to figure out, feel your way around the template a little bit. Yeah. You know, what else did it tell us? We needed a location. So location is going to be something like, you know, East US or whatever, things like that. So what if, you know, Presumably, we wouldn't want to do that. This wouldn't be a very useful template if all of these values were hard coded. Yeah. So why don't we go ahead and add our first parameters in now so that we can take those in um, when the template runs. So parameters 
uh, despite convention should be declared at the top of the file and are uh, defined by the param keyword. We want to give it a name. So we'll say like, you know, storage name, and then it wants to know what type is this parameter. You can see we've got uh, basically, you know, a handful of options here, like four or five, it looks like. We're going to just make this a simple string. Um, we could stop there. And if we deployed this template, it would say, oh, no, 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 we don't have all the information we need. You have to give us a, a value for that parameter, or we could define a default. So, you know, let's, let's say we'll put the hard-coded value up here. Now we could replace this. And then just like an ARM okay. tablet, it can override that when I run the file. Yeah. Right. So here's something else that's cool. So location is also going to be a string. Um, but for the default on location, what I like to do is set that to the default location for the resource group that we're deploying to. So there are some helper functions that come with BICEP. Um, and one of them is called resource group. So if I just call that, basically that's going to automatically give me a reference to the resource group that I'm deploying this template to. And then there are some properties on that, and one of them being the location. So I can easily set the location that I want, or the default, um, to the current location uh, of the resource group. So just like with ARM templates, where we have on a whole expression syntax and a whole suite of helper utility functions, we have these same ones available here, right? Exactly. Oh my yeah, gosh, and you're IntelliSensing all of this? The IntelliSense yep. that kind and skew. Yep, so just kind of finish that out. Uh, the, the last two remaining required uh, properties that we needed on the storage account. Um, and again, you know, I could use some parameters to take this in. Um, another uh, common practice I see is using variables. So let's say we wanted to uh, have this template available and, you know, we're going to do a bunch of testing with an application that we're building and we've got a development environment. And when we deploy this to the development environment, we want to keep the costs low and, you know, we don't need a ton of capacity and so forth. Um, so we might want to just use uh, you know, a, a standard LRS, which is just the locally redundant storage SKU for the storage account. But when we deploy that to production, we maybe want to go with something, you know, a little bit more globally available, a little something that's a little bit more resilient, something that would maybe leverage uh, the global redundant storage SKU. Um, so what I can do is create a variable that can contain that. And variables work similar to a parameter. So we just give it a name. Uh, I'll just call it like SKU name. Um, you don't have to specify a type with them because you know since you're not taking a value in, it's going to determine automatically what the type of the variable is based on the statements that you give it. Um, so here we could just you know either hard code that in or we could run some logic here. So I'm gonna do a couple more things. Uh, All right, so you create a parameter name, environment name. Yep. Um, okay, and a variable name, SKU name. Yep, so what I'd like to do here to kind of finish the example out is, you know, ultimately I want this SKU name to represent, uh, you know, the name value that I'm going to pass in down here for storage. But I'd like it to change depending on what I pass in for the environment name. So if I say, hey, my environment name is non-prod, we'll set the SKU name to the standard LRS. If someone happens to pass in an environment name of prod or production, then I want that value to update and be uh, the standard GRS or global redundant storage. So let me just um, grab that here. I'll, I'll grab it from some sample that I had already prepared. Um, just so we don't have to sit and watch me type all that out. <laughs> all right, so we have our parameter name environment type. String takes a non-prod. Now, if it's prod, we're going to go standard globally redundant. But if it's, it's any value other than prod, it's going to be standard um, locally redundant. Yep. So is there a way to control the value yeah. pass it to that parameter? Yeah, absolutely. That's a that's a great point. So you definitely can use something called attributes on the parameters to uh, control various aspects of them. So the example you just asked about, can we control uh, the possible values for that input parameter? That's one attribute. So 
um, the way you de declare an attribute is using the at symbol. Um, and what I like to do is, you know, put in just a, a new line right above the parameter that I'd like to apply that attribute to. Um, and doing that then will uh, give the IntelliSense a hint that, hey, I want to apply an attribute to the parameter directly below this line um, and will help show me the correct uh, values that I can choose. If I were to, you know, go somewhere else in the file and just say like, oh, I want to do a parameter, it, it will show you those, but it also shows you some other values that might yeah. not be applicable. So um, just maybe a helpful hint or whatever for those. It's a cool thing um, if you look at the best practices documentation, which we will have a link to in the description box. Uh, they specifically call this out that, yes, you can put parameters everywhere, but if you don't want to confuse the reader of this file, put them at the top and put all okay. parameter attributes at the top of them. Um, you can see I've made another syntax error here. I'm used to you know JSON or yeah. other languages where you're declaring an array and you need to comma separate things. Um, that's not required. Uh, but again, IntelliSense and that extension is doing a great job of helping us there so we don't get all the way done with our template and then have to go figure out what's wrong. So, all right, so you only have two allowed values, and then that yep. will determine what the skew is with a storage account. Okay, that's great. Yep, and I can just remove that from there. Um, and then other examples of attributes would be, you know, I could provide things like a, a description. Um, so that's, you know, again, things that would be called out in the best practice documentation if, if you wanted other developers or you were going to maybe publish this template for, for use elsewhere. Um, you know, it, it is a good practice to uh, put descriptions on those parameters so that people don't have to, you know, guess. I mean, in our case, we've just got a couple of parameters and the names are pretty straightforward, uh, but obviously it'd be more helpful if we provided a more uh, verbose description on those. Um, and then other examples are, uh, you know, like minimum and maximum length, um, and and uh, secure, which is another really good one, uh, but I'll talk about that one here in, in just a second. Secure would be uh, like you have a, a password value that you're sending cool. into your template. Like if you, maybe we we're going to deploy a SQL Server uh, resource, let's say, and you know you have to give it an admin password. We don't want our template to be emitting that password anywhere to the logs, right? Um, or you know showing up in the Azure portal someplace where you would see the history of a deployment. Um, so we can mark that as secure, and then that way uh, it will be obfuscated from any of the the logging. Cool. So let's see. We've got our storage name. Uh, we've got our location coming in from the parameter. So how we've do you got get the output of this bicep template? Like, you know, on ARM templates, you have the uh, ability to set yeah. Output labels. Yep, exactly. And and we can do that here as well. And a, a good scenario where you'd want to do that is, you know, uh, let's say we have this template as part of a CI CD pipeline um, and we're going to deploy a new storage account. And then after that happens, we want to take, um, you know, a certain property of that storage account that was just created, uh, you know, either the name or, you know, maybe an access key or something. Um, and send that to a step that's kind of further down the, the pipeline in our uh, release. Uh, so we would do that using an output variable. And the keyword there is just output. Works very similar to the other um, parameters and, and variables that we've done so far. So we just give that a name. Uh, we'll give it a type. Um, and then we'll set it to a value. and. We could just, you know, since this is a storage name that we input from a parameter, mm -hmm. we could definitely just, you know, set it to the the input parameter if we wanted to. That would be acceptable. Um, but in a more real world or production scenario, we would most likely be pulling uh, a property that was created as part of this process that we didn't know in advance. Yeah. Um, but it, it's very easy to to reference any of those properties. We just use that uh, local name for the resource that we created up here on line 11 storage one. And then I just hit the dot and IntelliSense will show us all of the properties that we can uh, grab and persist to that output variable. So yeah. I absolutely love that you never had to leave the IDE to get the complete template from parameters yep. to all the way to the output. I did cheat slightly on line nine because I didn't want to type all that out and, and make you guys suffer through all that. Um, but correct, I, I did not have to leave this to go look anything up. And uh, I think that's just part of the, 
the great experience that we had with kind of getting started with the bicep templates. So very, very easy to get going, very easy to kind of figure out uh, what you're looking for and getting to a working template. Um, so the next thing you would want to do is, uh, you know, test this locally. So before you would, you know, bake it into something like a CI/CD pipeline, uh, you can just run this using either Azure PowerShell or the Azure CLI uh, against a, a subscription to kind of test the deployment out and make sure that uh, template is working. Um, so I will just use uh, some Azure CLI commands here to do that. Uh, what I first need to do is create a new group that we can deploy this to. So I'll just do a quick group create. Uh, we'll call it something like bicep demo. We'll give it a location of central US. And hopefully that's everything I needed there. Before so this is a good, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, for our audience watching, that easy group create requires two or two flags by default, name and location. You can do yep. um, dash, dash, name, dash, dash, location, or shorthand, dash, n, dash, l. Either one will work. And that's a good example of um, you know what I just did there, where I'm typing in some uh, CLI commands. You could create a, a bash shell script to do that and put that into your CI CD pipeline as well. Um, however, using that versus something like a declarative bicep template, you would have to run some logic to make sure, you know, if I ran that command again, I would get an error because this group already exists and it, you know, the management uh, backplane would just say, no, I, I can't do that because you're trying to create the same resource again. Whereas with bicep, we can run this over and over and over um, and it will look at the currently persisted state, which is in Azure in your resource group and say, cool, I've got things that are named that already. Are there any differences in the properties that you want? And just kind of do the, the incremental changes on those versus having to write a bunch of scripting logic um, in a more kind of imperative fashion like we're doing down here in the CLI. All right, so I've got my group. Now we're going to say that we want to do a deployment, do a group. We're going to create one. We have to give it the name of a group, which is just dash dash group, or the shortcut is dash G. Uh, I call it bicep demo. Yeah. Um, and then we have to give it the name of the template file that we want to deploy. So in our case, that's our local template that we just created, which is main.bicep. Um, so we'll do that. And I do have one parameter that needs a value that we didn't supply. So it's asking us, hey, what do you want for that value? And because we gave it a select list of allowed values, um, it's showing us that right here in the CLI. We don't have to we don't have to type anything. It's giving us a select list. So we'll just say that we want choice number one, which is non-prod. Um, and that should then submit our deployment. Had I not uh, typed something incorrectly. <laughs> so um, you didn't type anything incorrectly. I just think my cool storage is not globally unique and it's fussing at you for that. Yep. Yeah. So my cool storage four five six might work. <laughs> so <laughs> let, let's address that issue right now. So this is a really good point where you know you might be deploying, in our case, storage or even Azure websites where you have to have a globally unique value for that resource. Um, and you know I don't want to have to go through this all the time where it's like oh what did the error say? Let me go pick you know my cool storage two or my cool storage fill or whatever. Yeah. Uh, there's actually a helper function built into bicep that we can use to generate a unique value here. So um, we'll want to do some string concatenation, which is much easier in bicep than it is in ARM templates. We can just uh, build it right into uh, the hard-coded string using a token syntax. So we'll do a, a dollar sign with the opening close curly braces. Um, and then I can call my helper function, which is just uh, unique string. Um, and so now we're getting the IntelliSense on that. What I want to do here is provide it with a seed value. Because again, I mentioned, presumably we're going to run this template over and over and over again. Every time we do like CI, CD, this template will run. And we don't want it to generate a new unique storage name for this resource group every time we run it. We want to keep the same storage account and just like update the properties if we have any changes. So by giving it a seed value that is specific to the resource group where we are deploying it, it will always generate the same unique value yeah. within this resource group. So I'll say resource group 
call that helper function. We'll just pass in the ID. Um, so now we'll have a string that contains some unique thing uh, plus my cool storage. So now that should work a little bit better for us. Yeah, for those people who are you know, deep computer science nerds, it's, all, it's like the first year of computer science when they tell you about your random number generator, your seed value, and yep. how you can use your seed value to influence it. There's lots of really good documentation around this in ARM itself. Like, for, for example, if you want a unique value that's unique for every deployment, pass in the deployment ID as your seed. No, unique for every resource group, pass in a resource group ID as your seed. Unique for every subscription, pass in your subscription ID as the seed. So it's pretty interesting. Another thing you'll find if you look at both the ARM and BICEP best practice documentation that um, you can do some really interesting things with your parameters and variables, whereas you know that storage accounts have to have a straight between a certain length. You could do concatenation, just like um, Phil was showing us earlier. You can use attributes to control how many characters somebody can put in into the storage account name, let's say a prefix, and then concatenate the unique string to the end of it. So you, just like you do with our templates, you can get really wild with this and build some really fun stuff. You'll also see a lot of examples um, used the prefix before. The unique string, because one of the fun things about unique string is really a unique string. So it is possible yep. for you to, your unique string to start with a number. Very rare, edge case, but it's very possible. And if it yep. does... Um, your could, deployment could before. violate the validation. Yep. yep. So I was just trying to buy you time. So the deployment. Yeah. No, that's great. <laughs> so we'll just quick show that uh, here's my uh, Azure subscription, the resource group I just created, Bicep demo, um, and then if we look in here, we should see if if scrolling is working today. Let me let me just refresh that. I think my screen res was confusing that a little bit. Um. So we'll see that storage account deployed to our uh, bicep demo uh, resource group. Yeah, that might be right. some control feedback. Uh, oh, there's there's the scroll bar <laughs> way down there. Yeah. <laughs> um, the other thing to note, though, is because we submitted this as a deployment within a resource group, since that's kind of the level I'm at right here, you get under the settings this deployments section. So you can go and see. Uh, the bicep deployments that have ran. And if you click into that, it will show you kind of all the details of the different steps that it performed. Obviously ours wasn't very interesting. It was just a storage account. Um, there's that you know goofy unique string that it generated with cool at the end. Um, and then uh, the outputs are also yep. available here as well. So you can see what's actually being output from that deployment. And just for fun, if you click on the template, people can see how that bicep also we're on the left hand side where it says template. Yeah, yep. People can see that our template is generated from a bicep file yep. and see how, how much um, typing <laughs> and yep. complexity you exactly. save by using this. Um, you can also, if you click on input, see what you put into that command line. So I think for this yep. example, yep, there's our storage name, location, environment type values, even though uh, we didn't veer far for the uh, defaults. And uh, another, just to kind of circle back on what I was talking about earlier with some of those attributes, the secure attribute specifically, had we uh, placed that secure attribute on one of these parameters, this is another location where it would not show you the value that was input there. So Absolutely. in you know, uh, the template itself and you know where you're getting these deployment steps, like nowhere in this experience would it show you that. I, it just replaces that with some stars. So you know a value was there, but you don't know what it is. So I was going to jokingly say, I'm the surrogate for the audience who have done ARM templates. A lot of stuff you learn with ARM is still valid here. So in that deployment, oh, yes. study, you saw that um, the deployment was named main, just like with ARM deployments. Your deployment is named after the name of your deployment file. Yep. But um, you also use the same command AZ deployment group create. So you can name your deployments, like um, give it a date or first deployment, second deployment, and they'll show up as unique items in the list. If you kept deploying this bicep file again and again without naming your deployments, it'll just replace that main deployment with yep. the most recent one. So it's really cool how a lot of the little um, things you've learned about building ARM templates all applies the same CLI commands, same PowerShell commands. If you built parameter files for ARM templates, same parameter files here. If you manually pass the parameters for ARM templates, same thing here. So just because just because you did some ARM development in the past doesn't mean you can't just jump into this and swim. I mean, yep, definitely, definitely a lot of crossover. Um, but I and having some experience with ARM obviously will help you tremendously here because you'll know kind of what you're looking for already. 
Uh, but what Samir, what Samir and I found is, you know, this editing experience and development experience is just so much easier uh, than having to work with the ARM template. Just a couple more things to show real quick. Um, one of the other features that I missed earlier, once you do have a template created in uh, VS Code, another thing that the extension will do for you is you get this little icon right up here, kind of near the toolbar, looks like a, a Visio diagram of sorts. You click on that and it will open up a new tab and render uh, the resources that you want to deploy uh, in a Visio type diagram. Now, again, ours is not very interesting, um, but if you did have other resources in your template, and I'll just, again, kind of do the, uh, we had a, a pre-baked cake over here. Um, this is another template I was working on that includes a storage account um, and then pulls in a module. Uh, so that, that's something we didn't cover previously, but a module is a way for you to embed other bicep templates so you can kind of break things out into reusable uh, components or modules and then pull them into kind of a master or main uh, template to orchestrate everything. So this one is using uh, the storage account, which is the example we saw earlier, and then a module to create an app service and, and things related to that. And if I look at the uh, template visualizer here, then we can see some of the power here. So we get our storage account, we also see this is wrapped in a module and there are some dependencies there. So there's an app service plan and then a dependency line drawn between that and the app service app. Uh, so you can just imagine that when you get a, a very complex template with a lot of dependencies, this makes it easier to uh, sort of visualize that and, and understand what's going on. Or if you're a person like me who has to create a lot of Visio diagrams, you can instead write them as code, which I'm much more familiar with and I can tell sense my way to a diagram real quick. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Um, one other thing we talked about with, you know, as we we're kind of looking at the output of our deployment here and um, Sydney, you mentioned, you know, hey, you can click on this template tab and it will show you the ARM template for that. So another thing uh, that you can do with bicep templates, especially if you're first getting started, is what I was talking about at the beginning of the video where you might want to kind of re reverse engineer something. So let's say you already have a pretty large deployment or um, you know, you started off with a project that was kind of small and over time it's just kind of grown and grown and grown and you've been manually adding resources to a resource group and now it's time to automate this and turn it into some infrastructure as code. You can download this uh, template um, and then once you do, there's a command in the CLI, as soon as my CLI loads up there, um, so the, the bicep command is now baked into PowerShell and Azure CLI. Um, so if I just show you the, the help on that, there is a decompile subcommand on that. So you can take an ARM template JSON file, run the decompile, and it will convert it into bicep. Um, now it is recommended that you don't just take that and say, cool, I'm, I'm good to go. Here you are, Azure, because uh, it probably will get a few of the properties wrong and you'll want to tweak you know, some of the parameters and variables and so forth. But that's a really good way, especially if you're not just starting from something really, you know, hello world, simple yeah. storage account example, mm -hmm. to reverse engineer what you have going on and then be able to move forward and iterate on that infrastructure as code from the generated bicep template. That's so cool. So, so Phil, um, really cool examples here. Uh, you have some links on where you can learn more. Yep, we do have a few links. There's a great learning path on MS Docs. Uh, it's really simple. There's uh, several modules available within that within that learning path. Uh, but you know, for example, when I was kind of getting back into Bicep a few weeks ago, I thought, oh, I'll just go look at the first couple modules, and within five to ten minutes, I knew everything I needed to know about how to write BICEP and, and how to make it go. Um, so it does get a little in depth and, and covers a lot of the more advanced features and capabilities within BICEP, uh, but super easy to get started. I mean, just like grab a sandwich at your desk and go through the first couple modules and everyone will think you're you are a BICEP uh, pro by, by the end of the day, which is really <laughs> cool. Um, we also, I believe have a documentation link to, uh, you know, the ARM templates um, and BICEP template language within MS Docs, not the learning module, just the documentation link. 
Um, and then I just wanted to show, Sydney, hopefully you can post those links for us into the video. Yeah, uh, but I did want to show off one other link that we can maybe add on to this later. Uh, this is something called the Bicep Playground. Um, and again, this leverages the decompile feature that I was talking about just a, a few minutes ago. Um, but this gives you a side-by-side -side view um, and they've got some sample templates in here that you can choose from. So these are coming from, uh, Microsoft has a, a GitHub repo full of ARM template examples to kind of get you started with some common scenarios. Uh, so this is pulling from those and you oh, basically just- start templates. What's that? The quick start templates, those are Yeah, fun. the quick start templates, yep, exactly. Um, so you can pick one of those from this list and it will load up the ARM template version on the right and then decompile that to the bicep version on the left. Uh, the one I selected here, I believe, is for a container registry. Uh, so you see the ARM template version of that is, you know, 70 lines long, roughly. Um, and you get everything you need in the bicep template in only 33 lines. Uh, so it, it is definitely more concise. Uh, it's definitely easier to develop against. It provides a much better developer experience, in my opinion. Um, and... Yeah, just we've been having a great time with it so far, and I think a lot of people could could benefit from taking a look at it. And we'll make sure all those links are in the description box. So, awesome. Um, Phil Samir, this is incredible. Um, really yeah. glad that you are able to show this to us today. Yeah, thanks so thanks so much. Thanks again for having us. All right, and um, yeah, any questions? Um, please, you know, leave, leave something in the comments. Check out the links, please. Check out the Microsoft Learn Learning Path. Really look forward to um everybody get hands on with Bicep, and maybe we'll get you two back on to talk a little bit more about Bicep in the future. Sounds great. Awesome. All right.